Howdy ho, folks! I'm back! It's been a while since I've done a uh, Helmuth build guide. Uh, but hey, uh, as of the uh, latest Corpus Railjack updates, they're currently only out on PC, but like just... It's gonna be like in April on, on consoles as well, so it's gonna come out real soon on all platforms. And uh, with Corpus Railjack, they have permanently unvaulted Valkyr Prime and... Nyx Prime. You can farm for them by opening, like, abandoned derelict caches in the new uh, Corpus Railjack tile sets, Like Venus, Pluto, and Neptune, and the Veil, and stuff like that. Uh, and you can farm for uh, Valkyr Prime and Nyx Prime. They're, like, permanently. They're permanently unvaulted. You can always get them now. Which is cool. So I figured, hey, why not take the opportunity to, to make some Helmuth build guides for, for for those two. So I've got some Nyx stuff coming up, but for now, let's let's take a look at, at Catwoman here. <laughs> yeah. So, Valkyr is uh, kind of one of those frames who have fallen behind a bit, right? As the game has evolved. And I, if you ask me, I would actually put Valkyr as number one on the list of... Um, Warframes that need to be reworked and like updated. I wouldn't put Loki as number one. I wouldn't put Frost as number one. Uh, I, I'd put Valkyr. Valkyr is absolutely the one who most desperately needs a rework. Because as it is, she's already kind of known for, for only having one good ability, which is Warcry. And now that Warcry is attainable for other Warframes through the Helmet system, that kind of like takes away the only thing she had going for her. Or so people think. Uh, it's not entirely true, but uh, you know, there's some merit to it. Now, if other Warframes get Warcry through the Hellman system, they're gonna get like a diminished version of it. So she has the, the full effect. Uh, but that's not all there is to her. To an extent it is, uh, but she also has pretty chunky base stats. She has... Uh, a ton of armor. A ton of armor. Good amount of health too. Uh, so she's actually she's actually one of the, the tankiest Warframes in the game. And with Warcry she increases her armor uh, even further. So she's got like massive, massive damage reduction. Um, but, but when you look at her other abilities, just you know, her hysteria where she pulls out her claws, her exalted weapons, and, you know, she's immortal during this thing, but once you run out of energy and you haven't deactivated it, and, and there's, like, enemies close by, then you take a bunch of stored damage, so it's kind of, like, wonky and unreliable. But most importantly, with the way the melee of this game has evolved, um... You're gonna do more damage with your normal melee weapon than you will with her big exalted weapon, her claws. And the reason for that, as we all know, is that exalted weapons can't... Uh, they can't equip certain mods. Like, you can equip Condition Overload, yeah, but, but like Weeping Wounds and, and Blood Rush, like the, the mods that are kind of stupid and make... Uh, melee weapons kind of broken you you can't equip those on pretty much any exalted weapon i think the exception being garuda um so yeah i mean you can do like what, what i did here and you can build it like as a heavy attack build and just spam heavy attacks and then it's still gonna be pretty good because then you're not gonna use blood rush and weeping wounds anyway uh but but normal melee weapons are just stronger and you, yeah, like the you get the invulnerability as well from Hysteria, but as I'm gonna show you, we're gonna do like a big, big tanky build where we're actually not gonna be using that. And then the third ability that she has, like the paralysis, it's just, um, it's just one of the kind of worst crowd control abilities in the game. You stun enemies for a little while, but you have to drain your own own shields to do it. And it deals like some damage, but it's like laughably bad damage. So you like kind of, kind of never really want to use this. So 
And and then her normal number one ability is replying, which is just ever since ever since parkouring and bullet jumping and all that was in, in, introduced to the game. Uh, it's just pointless as like a as like a traversal skill, which is what it was from like before. See, you shoot like a rip line, and you can pull an enemy in. Yeah, great. There's there's grouping abilities now, or you can just hey, you can launch yourself with that. Yeah, but we have bullet jumping now. So she was built in a different era of Warframe. She was built when we didn't have those uh, mobility skills or grouping abilities, and when melee weapons weren't as busted as they are today. So you know her big claws were actually good, but they're not good anymore. So she's, she's got Warcry, more armor, more speed, decreased speed of enemies, which is extremely strong. But that's it, that's what she got. That's what she got. So let's take a look at what we can do with her, right? So, I instead focused on her, her big strength. Her big strength is her massive, massive tankiness. She can just take a hit and, and keep on going. Like... With the amount of armor I have, we're just gonna chunk out some heavy gunners, and I'm gonna plop out my war cry. And, uh, like, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm just gonna take some hits. And as you can look at my health bar up there, it's like, I'm... I can, I can tank stuff pretty good from these guys. Like, I'm basically just letting them shoot me, and I'm not... I'm not dying. Now I'm a bit worried here because now my war cry ran out, so. That's a problem. But like, you can basically just let enemies shoot you in the face and you're gonna survive most of it. Because she's big tank. Big tank, big strong. So, let's use that. Let's use that and just focus on uh, damaging enemies with uh, weapons instead. And just have a pretty nice time. Because you don't really have to worry about going down on any sort of normal content. You can play this up in Steel Path as well. As long as you just stay mobile and use your abilities, you're gonna be fine. You're gonna be fine up until a certain point. Any build that focuses its survivability on health and armor is eventually gonna reach a point where it's not gonna be viable anymore. Eventually, when enemies get too high in level, they're just gonna one-shot you. No matter how high your armor is. And then you have to use stuff like invulnerability and shield gating and stuff like that to, to keep yourself alive. But that's for like the, the endurance runs that last several hours. If you're not one of those people doing endurance runs and you just want to build that can survive basically anything in in the, the base game. Sorties, um, level 5 Kuva Liches, Arbitrations, you, you know you name it, then yes, yes, this one can. It can just face tank anything. But then you have to do damage as well. And for that, I'm gonna be rocking the uh, the Glaive Prime. I have a Glaive Prime build here. I'm pairing it with the Kuva Nukor to spread some status. Um, Glaive Prime works very well with uh, Valkyr, uh, thanks to the increased attack speed from her Warcry, which means you can throw... Uh, these glaives very fast, and I'm gonna show you just like how potent they are. And the subsumed ability that I'm using is Chorus and Snare, because this is absolutely uh, benefiting from like just being able to group enemies. And as you can see, it also like sort of locks them down, and just they can't really do anything. So you spread some status, and you throw your glaive, and everything dies. That's some pretty good damage, right? So, that's my that's my point. Like, <laughs> just you know, hysteria and 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 her claws, uh, they just can't do that. Th they can't, they can't do that. <laughs> all right, let's go over the build so we can show you how it all works. Like I said, the subsumed ability is chorus and snare. It's uh, probably. Uh, the best grouping ability that you can get from the helmet system. Larva is kind of shit. It, it's just not good. This is so much better. You can recast it whenever you want to. It's It locks enemies down. It's not random. It, it just pulls in more enemies. It's fantastic. And it doesn't cost a whole lot of energy either. 
it's great. With that, um, these are basically the only two abilities you use. You just war cry, and with eternal war, it's just gonna always stay active. So you're just running around and snaring enemies and just uh, chucking glaives at them. What you use as your primary doesn't matter. We're doing a secondary plus plus throw melee thing. Standard deal with the Kuva Nuke or you just want to spread like a bunch of different status effects. Uh, primarily viral because you want enemies to just take increased damage. And then when it comes to the Glaive Prime, as you can see, uh, it's just one format. That's all you need uh, for a heavy attack build. Um, hey, I even have like a, a, a ribbon for this, but it's not like super necessary. This is just, it's just for like more initial combo. So I'm starting at like combo three, which is nice because you get like those multipliers when you throw it. Uh, other than that, we, we got like the new um, glaive mods, for example, the volatile quick return, uh, which makes it makes it so that your glaive doesn't bounce around. Uh, and instead, when it hits a wall or when it hits anything, basically, it just explodes by itself. Or you can uh, trigger it manually. Here, I'll show you real fast. Uh, how it works with the with the glaives. Now you can just you know spam E to to just do normal combo and stuff, but this is not how you're supposed to uh, to use the glaive. You hold down uh, your button instead to chuck it. That's how you do it. And while it's in the air, you can hold down again to prep another chuck. So it just it just chains by itself. Which is nice. And while it's in the air, you can just press your alt fire button to explode it. See? Big AoE explosion. It's actually quite potent. And even as it explodes, you can still like charge the uh, the throw button to chain throws. It, it takes some finesse to... To start chaining throws together good. But you can do it even like combining it with the explosions. And that's how you do it. You're just... that That's the build. You throw and explode. Throw and explode. Throw and explode. Throw and explode. Um, to that to that effect, we have, like, more throw damage on... Uh, and the punch through on consecutive throws. Consecutive throws is when you, like, chain them together. Um, other than that, like, you know, heavy attack wind-up speed to throw faster. Big crit chance. Big... Big melee damage, more more damage on your heavy attacks, more heavy attack wind up speed, even that. So, so it's just, and also initial combo, so you get the combo multipliers. That's it. That's the build. That's how you do a a throw build with a glaive, and now you can like dual wield. So you have the the gun in one hand and the glaive in the other. So if I just use my shoot button, I shoot, and then I can throw, and then I can shoot, and then I can throw. So I don't have to switch between them; they just chain together. Which is nice. So the gameplay loop is quite simple with this. The gameplay loop is basically just approach a huge chunk of enemies, cast and snare, group everyone together, prep them with the Kuva New Core, throw and explode, throw and explode, throw and explode. And everything dies. That's all you gotta do. See? They just go down. Give them some viral stacks. Throw and explode. Especially the Glaive Prime. Uh, it's better than the other throwing weapons in that regard because it has forced slash procs on the heavy attack explosion. Well, like just guaranteed slash procs. So it's even more stupid damage to just completely bypasses armor. Hehehehe. <laughs> um, as for Valkyrie herself, I have invested heavily in this. <laughs> Because we're going big tank, right? So, triple umbral. Uh, she enjoys the uh, power strength. Increases the boosts to Warcry. Definitely want more health. Def definitely want more armor. So, if we're gonna use these mods anyway, then why not just go full umbral? If you don't want to go full umbral, you can just use the normal mods. Normal vitality. Normal intensify. Normal fiber. And that's fine. But the, the buffs you get from... The three umbrals is is quite nice. If you don't want to use an umbral forma, you can pretty much just not use this mod slot here, the aura. It's just like a bit more melee damage together with the steel charge, but you can just take that out 
And then you can just put in all three Umbral mods um, without using a number former, basically. Um, adaptation for even more tankiness. Vitality and Fiber for even more tankiness. Guardian and Grace for even more tankiness. And all of this just makes it so that you basically can't die. Now, since we are working with a build focused around um, armor and health instead of invulnerability and instead of um, shield gating and stuff like that, we are constantly going to be taking damage. The enemy's going to shoot at us and we're gonna just going to chip away at our health, not to the point where we're ever in trouble, but we are constantly taking damage, which means we can absolutely take advantage of Hunter Adrenaline, which makes it so that, you know, as we're taking damage, we are just constantly refilling our energy, so we basically have unlimited energy. Never have any energy problems. Um, and that's, you know, and of course you need the Eternal War, so you don't have to recast Warcry all the time. Warcry is just always going to be active, you don't even have to think about it. So, the only thing you're going to be spending your energy on is spamming and snare, and just casting and snare whenever you run into a new group of enemies. Then you shoot them with your Kuva Nukor, then you throw your Glaive at them, and they die. That's the gameplay loop. It's extremely strong. It can take out very high level enemies because the uh, the Glaive Prime is, is, a, is a beast of a weapon. And it's just a chill time because if you're playing Valkyr as a, as a just a massive tank, you don't even need Hysteria. Right? And I've seen the Valkyr guides talk about like, oh, just when you're in trouble, cast Hysteria and you'll be invulnerable for a while. Well, here's the thing, you're not, you're not gonna be in trouble. You're just not. You can you can face tank whatever the game throws at you, and you just you're just not gonna die. So it's kind of Warframe on easy mode. And you know, hey, if you want another setup with some nice primary weapons or some other melee stuff, you can do that. I'm just showcasing this Glade Prime build because it works. Uh, it works very well with her with her attack speed buffs that she just has innately. Um. So yeah, that's that's the build. That's that's Catwoman. She's she's still got it. <laughs> no, but no, but real though. She's still strong. That being said, I still stand by what I said before that she is the Warframe in the game that is in the most dire need of a rework because her her most of her set just kind of like just the game has passed her by. But hey, she can she can take a hit like few others, and and that accounts for something.